Jack, otherwise known as LB Nerds on Instagram, and I'm here with my co-host Ryan, otherwise known as Yankee Stat Talk on YouTube. We have a special guest today, uh, Sebastian, otherwise known as Nationals Express on Instagram, and he's going to be here. We're going to be going over our uh, top 10 second baseman in baseball, along with the uh, Mariners news, some free agency signings, and of course our trivia, which is free agency related, I believe, today. I'm not entirely sure, but I think so. Uh, anyways, uh, another big thank you to Relevant for sponsoring today's podcast. Relevant is the best social networking app out there. It allows you to create vibes slash servers that allow you to um, have a goal-oriented or content-oriented focus on a particular thing, uh, such as sports, any kind of hobby, cooking, travel, whatever it is that you have any, any interest in, Relevant's the place to be. Go download the app. The link is in our bio on Instagram at Deep Drive Pod and my Instagram at LB Nerds. Thank you to Relevant for sponsoring today's podcast, and let's get into it. As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be a home run. Today, MLB legend Albert Pujols announced that he'll be retiring uh, in the end of the 2021 season after his contract expires, which is pretty much not much, uh, not much of a surprise to anyone uh, at this point. Pujols has been pretty shitty over the last three years, but he has been such a good player. Uh, how many years? When did he come up with the Cardinals? Ryan, do you know? 2001. Thank you, James. I. Uh, he doesn't want to with the Cardinals. He's been one of the best players in baseball uh, history, really one of the best first basemen of all time. We'll miss Albert. Ryan, do you have any particular memories of Albert Pujols that, you know, give you the chills or whatever? Uh, I have not memories of him playing because I was really young when he was really, really, really good. Uh, but I do have one memory of uh, when I used to, because I used to play the absolute crap out of MLB 11, the show. And so uh, what I would do is I would always set up my fr- the franchise mode and I would like sell the farm from the Yankees. Like I would just, like destroy their future just to acquire Pujols, even though we had to share it just because my dad used to rave about Pujols. And so he's always been one of my, when I was little, he was always like one of the most recognizable players. And like whenever someone say Pujols, I was like, oh yeah, that guy, that first baseman from the Cardinals. And then when he went to the Angels, uh, it all went downhill from there, obviously. Uh, but I, I really think one of the things I, I really wish would have been different was I wish he would have been bet way better as an angel because a lot of people who started watching baseball in the 2010s got to miss ended up missing out on a lot of Pujols' great years like people forget how great he was defensively I'm pretty sure he was an above average base runner as well and we all know that he was one of the best hitters at the first base position we've ever seen uh you know you think of moments like even though it was in a losing effort that home run off of Brad Lidge I mean, this dude was just an incredible baseball player. He's a baseball legend. He's going to, like, he could, he's going to waltz into the Hall of Fame. There shouldn't be a doubt. He should be unanimous. Will he be if, unanimous? Do you think he'll be unanimous? I think he, I think the trend has been opened up that people will be more unanimous now. If he goes in and some, like, I think at this point, it's gotten to a point with me at least, where if someone literally sits in a room and they're talking to Hall of Fame voters and like, yeah, I'm not voting for Pujols. Like, does no one just look at that person and go, are you crazy? Like, are you, are you, are you stupid or something? Like I, I, he has to go in unanimous. He's too much I mean, of an icon, to too fair, much of a legend. I probably do that too. Whoever didn't vote for Larry Walker, but yeah, I would do that as well. But I think pools is so much more recognizable, such an icon in the game. It's like, there's literally no reason you could not vote for him. He's got literally everything, everything, everything. The, the, he's like, he's as fa- He's as recognizable as Jeter as well beloved. Cause he played for the Cardinals as any player could be. And he's one of the greatest players we've ever, we've ever seen. So it's, it would be, it would take a lot for him not to go in unanimous at this point. He reminds me of Mariano in that sense, where like, it's undoubtable. Quick update, some great news. My NBA top shot really just went through uh, for anybody who does that. Just want to let you guys talking, know. We're trying to honor Albert Pujols. We're talking about top <laughs> no. shot. Top <laughs> shot. We're trying to honor right. Albert Quick Pujols update. Right Nobody gives a fuck, Pujols, Jack. But my, my <laughs> NBA top shot order did go through. So that's great news. Great, Anyways. Great. Uh, moving on, I mean, I don't really know. How, do you have anything else to say about Pujols? I, I'm a big Pujols fan. You know, I, I don't like the Cardinals too much, but I, I do respect Pujols. I hope Pujols comes into town and against the Tigers and hits like a 450 foot shot off Matt Boyd, a grand slam to piss you off. Fuck you. I, no, I hope he waltz into 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 freaking Detroit. Bases juice. Matt Boyd's throwing a gem. Sixth inning, the dude's like he's gonna finish off a gem, and you're gonna be make like start bragging about how good he is, and he just unloads one like 450, 460, over over right field specifically, right field. It's gotta be you know right field specifically, and it's gonna be a moonshot, a moonshot. 
Because if it's a pulled home run, that's a little bit too like, okay, pulled bombs. I mean, an op- an Apo Taco absolute nuke. That's what I need to see now. Just because you said the total top shot stuff, we're talking about Pujols. All right. Uh, NBA top shot to the moon. But anyways, uh, moving on to our next topic for today's podcast, we're going to be talking about the resignation, uh, firing of the Mar- uh, the Mariners uh, president. What's his name? I- I'm trading his name. He's really irrelevant. He's also a piece of shit. What's his name? Hold on. Uh, let me find his name. Ah, John. No, no. Uh, fuck. What is his name? His fuck. name was Kevin Mather, but Kevin Mather. Fuck you, John. Kevin. From you're fucking, you're a piece of shit, Kevin Mather. And I'm not. Yeah, no, he's terrible. I'm so glad that you know this Zoom call got leaked because a he wouldn't have been gone probably if it wasn't. So he's gone now, and hopefully the Mariners, the Mariners have one of the brightest futures in baseball, are, are going to be going forward without him. Uh, and you know Jerry Depoto has been been very good. Uh, this offseason, I mean, Jerry DePoto doesn't really have, he just makes a lot of moves, which is, you know, entertaining at some points in time. But uh, he's been very good over the past three years. Mariners' future is bright. I'm glad to see what we're going to do. Uh, hopefully, uh, the uh, front office leadership will be better or it will be the same and they just lost such a cancer. Uh, but Ryan, what are you most excited to see uh, besides Jerry K- Kalanick this season from the Mariners? I feel like K- Kalanick's like the, the biggest answer, but w- what's the most exciting thing for you? Well, I, I mean, personally, because I'm a Yankees fan, I want to see how Paxton does. I think, I mean, just because, I mean, I love Paxton and I'm sad he left, but I really think that they what the Mariners did there was they got a guy who's either going to be really good and they can ship off for valuable assets or he's going to bust and no one's really going to care. But it's good to see him. I mean, for at least the Mariners' sake, Paxton's a recognizable name. You know, he grew up, he was from that, he, he developed in that farm system. He spent a lot of years there. So for Mariners fans, at least that's something to watch. And I'm really excited to see another year of Kyle Lewis. I'm another. I'm really excited to see. Um, I think JP Crawford's going to take a step defense. His, I'm pretty sure he's one of the better defenders in uh, at the shortstop position. Uh, if you could just develop a little bit more offensively, he can be a pretty solid shortstop because defense always matters a lot more than offense at shortstop. Uh, so he feels a slightly below league average hitter there, but his defense is is there. He's going to be fun to watch. I mean, again, you put it best. They have a really bright future. And I just hope that they break that streak of that playoff uh, of that playoff thing. Cause I mean, as a Browns fan, I, I understand being on that graphic of like, Oh, longest shot uh, hasn't been in the playoffs since 2000 and thing. Uh, hasn't done this since this hasn't won a playoff game since this hasn't won a world series since this hasn't gone to a world series. No, hasn't haven't gone to a world series in general uh, last world. Like all these things that just like piss you off as a fan when you're sitting around, you're just like every single time they bring up your team, it's always about your drought or your streak. So I hope they could break that at some point. Astros are kind of on the downturn, even though I still think they're really, really good. They're going to, they're losing a couple key pieces. Uh, the athletics lost a bunch of key pieces. The A's definitely took a little bit of a step forward, even though I do think that they mismanaged this off season. They definitely are still a solid team, I guess. And the Rangers are rebuilding. So the Mariners uh, uprise, hopefully this year, they take a big step at least become somewhat competitive. If they're a 77 win team, that's a huge step forward. And that's what I hope that they can get this season just so that next year they can at least build a winning team and get to the playoffs. Yeah, I agree. I'm excited to see Paxton. I'm excited to really see, um, uh, well, what's his name? Fuck, who, who am I? Mitch Hanniger coming back from his ball injury or groin injury, whatever it is that he's coming back from. Uh, I'm excited to see how he does. I uh, he was very good in 2018, obviously struggled with some injuries over the past two seasons, but I'm excited to see him get back to form. And I think the Mariners are really a sneaky team. I don't think they'll be a playoff team by any means, but I think they're a very solid team with guys like Kikuchi Prime for a breakout. Uh, their bullpen is also very good. You know, Ken Giles and Andres Munoz will be back. Um, I believe Munoz is back in July and um, Giles back in, uh, is it next year? Or is it like September or something like that? I'm on Twitter. I think it's next year because I'm pretty sure you got Tommy John during the season it- uh, okay. Then, yeah, it would be next similar year. to Cam. Similar to Canley. Canley, yeah. I think Canley said he might pitch in September. Or they, somebody did, but um, yeah, but I think he got his earlier. Because remember, Giles didn't get the opera because we all thought he was just injured to start the season. He's going to come back. Canley got injured in that series against the Nationals in that opening three game set, uh, that third game of the season. So he was in. He he got Tommy John pretty early, but J- Giles I think got it. I think either in the off season or in like September. It was not early as early in the season as Canley. Yeah, I suppose. So I guess this season, Paxton's one of the guys. Love Paxton. Um, Austin Nola's on the Padres now, but they got uh, Taylor Trammell in return for him. That's going to be interesting to see how he does. He's they got Ty France too, right? They got Ty France, but I feel like, I like Ty Trammell, France. Trammell's been a guy who's been kind of like a, a top prospect, or he's always been like a recognizable prospect over the past three years, a uh, few years, and apparently he's going to be making his debut this year. Uh, so it'll be exciting to see. 
Um, there have been a plethora of free agents that have not signed by the team this year. Notable guys like uh, self-proclaimed, not self-proclaimed, proclaimed by Jackson to be a top t- uh, top 10 free agent coming into the year. Jackie Bradley Jr. is not signed yet. Uh, a couple of relievers haven't signed yet. So, I, Ryan, what do you think? Is it, Do you think it's just the COVID market, that, that the reason these guys haven't been signed, or that there's a lot of teams that don't have these kind of needs? Why do you think a, a guy like Jackie Bradley Jr. isn't signed yet? Well, the reports are that he's asking for more money than a lot of teams are willing to give. I don't know how much I buy into that. I think I, it's probably true initially. But I, it's also like when it comes to center field, like how many playoff teams desperately need a center fielder? The Mets are no longer in that market. And you know, they kind of bought – they didn't price themselves out of it. They just kind of said, we're not going to wait for JBJ. We're going to go get a couple of stopgap guys. But like out of all like World Series contending teams, who needs a, uh, a center fielder? The White Sox, are, the White Sox would be in that tier. The White Sox twins are kind of in that tier of like teams that are World Series. I'm saying, wait, wait, wait hear me out. I said uh, teams yeah, that are not like World it. Series. They don't need a center fielder. And that's what I'm saying. That's I'm yeah, saying like teams like the Twins and the White Sox oh. don't need center fielders. I think the Astros are the only team that really needs a center fielder. But I don't think they're going to go the money to go out and get JBJ. So like all the teams that would be in like that middling tier and trying to look for another free agent, just kind of bring in at the end of the offseason and try to maybe get them a discount. None of them really need a starting center fielder. Buxton and um, Robert are amazing center fielders. So there's no need to go out and grab one. I mean, it put weird to go. It would be weird to put them in left field or something like that. That would just be too weird for them to do that. So they're not going to go ahead and do that. Uh, a team like the Astros who could need one aren't going to go out and spend a ton on JBJ. And if they do, it's going to be at a discount. So they're definitely going to wait out the market. And then, I mean, the Dodgers, no Padres, no Yankees. No. I mean, it's the, it's just, there's no one really, there's not a desire for that center fielder with the Mets no longer in that market. And then for Oda Rizzi, I, I mean, I find it a little bit weird. He's probably just pricing himself out because any team could use a starting pitcher. Uh, his incumbent team, the twins could desperately use another starting pitcher. Uh, the White Sox could use another starting pitcher. Astros are probably maybe trying to look for something. Oh, Rizzi would be a fit. Phillies. Uh, you name a team, you list a team, name a team, they probably need a starting pitcher. I think he's just priced himself out. Yeah, I mean, any team, really a lot of teams could use JBJ even as like a depth piece, but you probably wouldn't pay what he's asking for as a depth piece. Uh, he's pretty solid. I think there are a couple of people that overrate him in particular, uh, somebody in this call, but it doesn't really matter. I. Uh, I think he's still a solid player that should definitely be fucking signed at this point, really. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, I, I really feel like the Mets were that team. And I was like this entire, it was going to be the match of the Astros, but it seems again, like the Astros are just not going to get him. They just don't want to pay that money. And another thing is the Brewers are in the mix for JBJ. And that makes zero sense. Like, well, I, I, I get playing left field or, or they, but they, why would you get a center fielder to play left field? I don't really know. I, I, I mean, why would you available though? Like, like who's available to play outfield? That's on the uh, Markakis, Braun, Markakis and Shin Shin Chu. Choose a DH. Yeah. So, you know, they, I mean, it's, but that's on them. Know. That's no, that's on them because they didn't go out and get it, a corner outfielder. They didn't go well, out and try to pick like, at this point. They probably should make a push if they really need one. Cause they, if they do, do. Yeah. I mean, uh, if teams don't care about the off the field stuff with Puig, I would stay Puig, even though I don't think he should get signed by major league team. I do not want to see him in baseball, but like if teams, cause I, I mean, I get, I, did he have interest or was all the interest just fake? Was it like, I'm, well, like, I'm Luba, so confused about that situation. Luba said it was fake, but Luba's heard. But didn't Heyman also say like all. No, but Puig, Puig did have a little bit of interest, but I think each of those teams got a different guy. Like the Marlins, yeah, yeah. Like the Marlins got Duval yeah. and. Goes in the back, yeah. So, and the I, Yankees I, never probably any interest. It's probably just yeah. Luba making rumors or whatever. Well, and the Yankees got Gardner, so yeah, they were they always going to get Gardner. They, they were always going to get Gardner. Mike Talkman's better, anyways. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's, let's not say uh, Talkman's a little bit weird. I think, uh, by the way, well, based on his the, 2019 season, he's better. Well, okay, like, 2019, yeah, but 2020 was a trick, and we all know he overperformed in 2020. We all well, know even in, but in, even in 2020 with Talkman though, even if he's like three thirty slow there, right? his defense is elite. So, oh no, well, that's true. No, I'm just saying. Like, I'm saying it's better than Puig to begin with. If he's a league average hitter, of course. I don't know if he's going to be a league average hitter, but I, I, I mean, even if he's like a 95 weighted runs created plus, I mean, he's he he's really just an off brand JBJ if he has a 95 weighted runs created plus because he's really good defensively, but he just doesn't play center field as well as JBJ does. But one yeah. thing I would say, I mean, <laughs> if if a team wants a center so, uh, like an outfielder and it's like a the Brewers or something like that, the Yankees should be calling off all these teams who are like t- not willing to go the distance on. Um, jbj and try to get something for talking because i think 
I think a team would want to take a guy like Talkman in if they don't want to go out and pay JBJ. But I mean, I, I do agree. Weapon? A great, a great outfield piece for a team would be from the Yankees. Uh, I was thinking, so I was thinking Mar- the Marlins said they were interested. I heard reports that the Marlins were interested in a left-handed outfielder that threw a tighter off season. Um, oh, they might want Brewers. a right-handed outfielder huh? who can also play third base. Do- Miguel Antor is not going anywhere. Uh, well, if he he's, does, like, dude, he's, he's got a nice bat, you know? <laughs> he, he why why nice would you trade the best third base? Why would you pay? Why would you trade the best third baseman in baseball? Well, they have Urshela, who's a serviceable replacement. But, I mean, yeah, I, I guess maybe they'll get some good value back for Andujar or whatever. But... <sighs> yeah, I think I like DeGrom, maybe. Yeah. maybe I, I don't even know if I do that. But... Yeah, neither. But uh, anyways, but... <laughs> yeah, go ahead. We'll In all seriousness, though, like, I think Talkman can be like a viable option for teams who wanted JBJ and uh, didn't, don't want to pay the money because I think Talkman's under contract for four years, four years, five years, something like that. Yeah, uh, time. yeah a lot of time left. But, but a- um, I mean, JB has got to end up somewhere at some point. He's too good of a major league baseball player to not be on a major league team. And Odorizzi, I don't think I would say the same for Odorizzi. It's like he has to get a good contract because he's this. He's not. I think he has to settle for a one-year deal because he's the same. He's he's a worse Paxton because he also got injured in 2020. And unlike Paxton, he didn't at least have like good peripherals or something. No, he was flat out horrible. And he's his peripherals have never been that great. So I really do not think Odorizzi is going to get. I don't think Odorizzi should get more than like one year like 9 million, 8 million. The dude is not good enough to warrant a three year deal. Like I think it was like 345 that people were saying he wants. That's he does not even shouldn't even yeah, come close to that. No team should bite on that. They should keikle him. Someone should keikle him. Wait until the after the draft and sign him. That, that's the, the Wait, wait him. for who? For Odorizzi. Why would, Yeah, but why there's no reason to keikle him because Keiko there was a reason why Keiko wasn't signed and that was because they didn't want to give up con- compensation pick. Yeah, but no, there's no, no, no. But, there's no this pick attached to Odorizzi, so oh, there's right, no. Oh, right, right, right. I forgot, I forgot. But there's you know no what reason I mean by to wait. Kai, but you know what I mean by Kaiko? Just wait. Wait until he gives up and signs the one-year deal. Wait. Don't don't go give him a three-year deal. Don't go give him a three-year $45 million. That's crazy. The dude's barely better. I don't know. The dude isn't better than Paxton. The dude's injury-prone like Paxton. You're going to pay him three years? Three years? Come on. No. Not doing that. We're going to our next time with Taste Podcast. We're going to be doing our second base list. A uh, quick warning in advance, um, our, our guest Sebastian is a big ex- expected weight on base average user. Holy and W. your discussion is advised. Don't click off the podcast, but if at any point you're feeling like, you know, you feel like this guy just doesn't know what he's talking about, it's because he's overusing a yeah, stat. That's they've crazy. seen your lists. They're if, fine. If, if they've any, seen your if at list. any point list, you think that very, he has see, no list, idea what you're talking about, our, our list have been you're very, right. very similar. For yeah, me, yeah. I use, Jack, Jack I use, and Ryan I for two using. players. Jack. I mean, using x no. is not bad, but if you use it as like 80% of the I time. use it for two players. All right, well, don't, 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 go ahead. I'm, 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 I, just, well, I, I was kind of joking, you know. I that. I said your list is not going to be a Ted-esque list, but I digress. Hey, it's going to be bad, but not because of x Jackson It's going to be great. Decided to do, Jackson's decided to opt out of this uh, th- this list for whatever reason. He's doing his own shit, but whatever. I'm going to go through uh, my 10, <laughs> everybody tight. else going through the 10, <laughs> and then 9, and so on, like we usually do this. Uh, yeah. So I'll start. And number 10, I have San Diego Padres. Second baseman, Jay Crono. Oh, fuck, he's actually not playing second base. I'm a fucking idiot. He's not playing second, right? Yeah, he's because he's, he's going to play left, I thought. Uh, yeah. But fam. I'm to find a quick solution. But fam. No, but I think he will he's because not. I doubt Kim is going to start every day. He, he so do is. I say, so we're going with Cronworth. Is Cronworth count? Or does, if not, Just say, yeah, whatever. I would, count, count. I would count him because right. he's a second baseman more than a left fielder, I feel right. like. Yeah. Just count him. Number 10, I have. San Diego Padres, uh, second baseman slash left fielder with second baseman, Jake Cronenworth. I have the overrated second baseman from the Angels, David Fletcher. David Fletcher. Oh, I also have the overrated second baseman from the Angels, David Fletcher. I have the Pirates second baseman, Adam Frazier. I was close to doing that. Uh, Number nine, I have St. Louis, fuck no, Milwaukee Brewers, second baseman, Colton Wong. I have Mike Moustakis out of the most overrated team from the 2020 season, the Reds. I have Mike Moustakis from the most overrated team in 2020, the Cincinnati Reds. I have Marcus Simeon from the Blue Jays at nine. Okay. (laughs) There it is. There it is, boys. Eight wins Simeon at number nine. Number eight, I have Los Angeles Angels second baseman David Fletcher. 
I have Milwaukee's Brewers second baseman, uh, Colton Wong. He's finally going to be on a division winner this year. That's great. That's going to be cool to watch, yeah. Has he? Okay, whatever. whatever. I, I, yeah, he's been on one for like half his career. But I meant like this uh, year. He wouldn't, he wouldn't have been on one if he was still with the Cardinals. But right, right, right. I also have St. Louis – or former St. Louis Cardinals second baseman, Colton Wong. By the way, worst move of the offseason, declining that option. Common card. I have um, Jake Cronenworth from the Padres. That's awful. All right, another there it is. Thanks, James. <laughs> Give me a, never mind. Just go. At number seven, I have Atlanta Braves second baseman Ozzy Albies. At number seven, I have Marcus Simeon of the Toronto Blue Jays. At number seven, I have Tampa Bay Rays second baseman Brandon Lau. Number seven, I have Mike Mustakas from Cincinnati Reds. At number six, I have uh, Tampa Bay Rays, second baseman, Brandon Lau. I also have Brandon Lau out of a team that will not make uh, the divisional round. I have uh, – wait, we're at six, right? I yes, have six. I have Ozzy Albies of the Atlanta Braves. I also have Ozzy Albies of the fourth-place Braves. W. At number five, I have newly acquired – Toronto Blue Jays, second baseman, Marcus Simeon. And I'll just mention real quick, we're not including Kevin Biggio for this. So Simeon's the second baseman. Biggio is going to be third base when we do that. We did, we, we did third base. Right. We he did probably, third base, yeah, but he's not going to have had Biggio in my top 10. Actually, what I, uh, I don't know. No, maybe he wouldn't. I no. Maybe I would have had him at like 10 or something. I, I don't no, know. You would have. Again, no. I don't know. No, Again, he's stop. not better than Urshela. I don't, not, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Stop. Simeon, moving on. Moving on. I wish I could meet him. I have Ozzy Albies out of not the best team in the NL East. At five, I have Marcus Simeon of the Toronto Blue Jays. At five, so I have Brandon there. Lau. At four, I have Arizona Diamondbacks second baseman Cattell Marte. I have Jose Altuve out of the second best team in the American League. Okay, I have the, I'd call it a fluke, but 2019 NL MVP candidate Cattell Marte. And I have Jose Altuve from second best team in the AL West. Pump your At number three, I have Houston <laughs> Astros, Baja, Bang Bang, Trash Can, whatever. Second baseman, Jose Altuve. I have a future New York Yankee, Cattel Marte. I have a future New York Yankee. No, I'm kidding. I have Jose Altuve. And I have Cattel Marte. At number two, I have New York Mets. Uh, second baseman Jeff McNeil. Uh, right, we I all have, have McNeil and then Lemicki. Yeah, I have future New York New York Yankee. Jeff yeah, McNeil. all right. Yeah. We all have McNeil and then Lemicki. Everybody's Lemicki at one, right? No. You don't. You have McNeil at one. I have Nico Horner at, one. at number one. You have McNeil at one. That's yeah. that's that's crazy. What the fuck? Actually, that's not crazy. That that's is not no, crazy. McNeil one. All right, all right. I I was talking about this. Okay, okay. Hold on. I I have to I have to ask Jack a question. How are you going to not care about volume and then put McNeil at two and DJ at one? Okay, because DJ Lemayo has better. DJ does have better care stats. Well, not all, from 1820. You know, yeah, yeah, but that's because yeah. 18 was a complete time. On 18, but using hey, 18 me, for DJ right, Lemayo is completely different. Take real quick. But Let's if you use his defense me. from 2018, then all right. Yeah, but his defense is inflated in 18. Obviously, he's a better player in 2018 than he was in 20. No, fuck, never mind. He's a better player, obviously, 2019, 2020 than he was in 2018. And if I cared a lot less about volume, I'd probably have Cronenworth a bit higher. Uh, and I'd probably have uh, Semien a bit higher as well. But uh, because, you know, he's a plate appearance merchant at the end of the day with his war from last year, I think. Uh, but anyways, I think the top two aren't. I, I guess I kind of overreacted it with the McNeil thing. I think LeMay, he's the clear one, but he could definitely be two. I could see it with McNeil one. Uh, I just think his fielding also it regressed a bit in 2020, but it was 60 games, and I think it'll get back up to if it's not going to be that elite level fielding. It's going to. But be- McNeil still leads him by 20 points in WRC plus or 17. Yeah, but you're also using 2018 fully. If you're using a fully weighted scale, weighted scale with 2018 and 2019 weighted equally, Lemay he was 2018 WRC plus was like 97. Yeah. So I understand what you're saying, but I wouldn't really consider you know weighing it even close to to. Well, I wouldn't weigh 18 and 19 equally. I'd weigh 19 more, but yeah, that's, which is why I'm, I'm saying, better. I'm right, saying right. I'm saying his defense that, would be worse. It's but his defense to... would be much worse. Yeah, but that's fine. I think, I, I also think first of all, second base defense is not like a, a super yeah, it's not that valuable. It's important, important, but it's the same as third base. Important. It's not like third base or what? It's the same. Well, it is like it's the same as third base. 
Yeah, well, I think, not as, I mean, I don't, I don't. my personal, I, personally for me, I think third base is a bit higher. And the position, positional adjustments might be a bit different from what I actually think. But I, I'd say they're kind of similar. Well, that, the, the, you don't just matter. get to decide. Yeah, no, just, yeah. <laughs> what? Well, you know, I decided yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 no, no offense, but I don't care what your position no, adjustments are. Arm, 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 <laughs> arm strength matters a lot. You don't have to care what I think. I'm just saying personally, I arm strength does matter a lot for me, obviously, at third base relative to second base. Yeah, well, I throw Chad, so I know what arm strength is, but I don't really care. Maybe we have more range at second base. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's, that's true. true. It also depends on who you're playing. They bounce off. Just a shortstop like, with less arm. Yeah. What? Yeah. It's a shortstop with a shorter well, throw. Well, Simeon. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's why Simeon's defense is probably going to be better at second base than it was at shortstop. Mayhew and Jeff McNeil are probably going to be around the same offensive player in 2021. I think what? that's fair to say. No, around the same offense. He, he's player. probably only saying that because of Steamer, but go on. Yes, yes, that's exactly what I'm <laughs> saying. Think, it. I think Lemicky's gonna be a lot worse. But also, you also have to look not at the, a, lot, a lot worse than no, a lot worse. No, than not McNeil. a lot. Excuse me. Let me amend my language here. I think a bit worse. But they both wait. They both overperformed their expected weight on base average. I'm not so looking if you're gonna at say it, expected weight on base average. Okay, so what I metric think do you have? You gonna take like a major. Okay, game. what metric do you have that supports the idea that Jeff McNeil is overperformed the same way DJ Lemayhew is? He's overperformed. No, I'm saying mainly both of them have. The the metric is called over- City Field. Both, but both yeah. of them are overperforming. Both of them are. Is he overperformed as much? Pretty sure he has. I can give you a check right now. Can you check? Because so. I know yeah, DJ Lemayhew both had play in completely. I like, did this list like a stadium, month ago, so. and I double checked. DJ Lemayhew sure underperformed in 2019. In terms like of his expected weight on base average, I like, I, I, like that, I guess. But you like, get my I'm point. Sure he was like by a bit, and expected weight on base average. Also, Lemayhu is a short porch merchant, and he also, yeah, he doesn't pull the ball a ton. So Alex Bregman, it, it, it kind of harms people who pull the ball a lot, a la Alex Bregman. So McNeil had a three twenty five x woba, and then the year before three sixty one, and then the year before three thirty two. So if we're talking about regression here, both of those guys, if not, so Mc, Mc, Lemayhu's three fifty expected weight on base average would be the second highest. You also um, have to, you um, have to throw a ballpark. To, I don't think you can just straight up look at you know X Woba and say this guy's gonna. Regress. I understand, <laughs> but I'm not just using X Woba. I'm just saying they both what are underperforming. I'm using. I say they. I use. So first, I'm using Steamer Woba and expected mm-hmm. win on base average because I'm too lazy to look at prospectus right now. Uh, but point is, both of those guys are probably due for regression, and if yeah. and if they don't regret, and if they both regress, they'll probably reg- because McNeil has a high, has a low, has a bigger. Uh, difference in his expected weight on base average and weighted on base average. The problem and Lema- and Lemayhu's performed. I think what is it? It's a fourteen point difference in weighted runs created plus since eighteen, right? Uh, what's the difference? No, it was like a lot more. Twenty. Like yeah, mean, I don't exactly know. It's a it's a uh, wide difference. But both of those guys are probably gonna if they both regress like we believe they will, they probably will both fall in a similar plane. And Lemayhu is a better defender, so. That's I, I think it, and and he's and I don't I don't want to get into like durability and stuff like that because I really don't think it's fair to say McGill doesn't have volume because in 2018 they called him up really late uh, in the season I know in 19 he got injured but wasn't he pretty healthy in 2020 so yeah I mean co- I volume against also him. you got off to a very slow start which is kind of like you have to consider it but uh, it's also kind of difficult because you know obviously only 60 games so I also like I, you don't want to take too much time in 2020 obviously but uh, I had no problem I, I said I, I do still have Lemayhu at one. I don't really know exactly if you're going at Sabre or me or not, because I had Lemay at one. I think McNeil could easily be one next year. Uh, but I as of right now, I'd say Lemay is kind of fair. You're muted, by the way, if you're talking. Uh, but yeah, I feel like you could go either way uh, with that. I I picked Lemay and I and you guys are gonna you guys are gonna say it's dumb, but I picked him because he's been I mean, he's been a little less consistent, but he's played a lot more and it's dumb. Uh, I'm kidding. It's and, not that bad. Yeah, and true. and and he's ironic a, of Jack to say that. And he's a better defender, so like by a lot too. So I mean, I feel like you can really go either way. And I think McNeil's war is a little inflated because he plays some outfield, some left field, some third base. Uh, he's not a good defender out there, is he? Though he's a lot better at second, isn't he? Um, yeah. I don't know, but he's I still not that great that at second. Who McNeil? Yeah. He has seven yeah, one hundred and fifty at second. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's a good defender. Oh, good. oh, by the way, can we talk about how the hell, Seb, you have Simeon at Simeon yeah, nine? Let's talk about nine. That, Actually, I kinda that makes no I sense. Mean, that does, that that does sense. make sense. He I want to predict the okay. argument here. I want to predict the argument here. You're going to say because uh, the war is inflated. Uh, well, it is. That's, that's a fact. OAA, he's a lower x but he really outperformed, and he regressed a lot in 2020. Oh, my God. Those are W arguments. I love those. 
Three or four. I'm not going to use Exova. Okay, I don't need Exova. Because he had a 114 WRC plus from 1820, right? And a negative 4 OAA, 150. That's already basically worse than Mustakas, he who had um, 108 WRC plus and a 7 OAA, 150. And you already know Simeon had an outlier year in 2019. He's been like average or below hitting every other year except that year. So I don't know why he would be better than Mustakas. Why well, else? Like I was saying, I think because you can't just act like the outlier year didn't happen. Well, well, I'm, I'm not acting like it didn't happen. Outlier. You had a 114 well, WRC plus with it. Tom, if you say that, if you say that you can't pretend it didn't happen, how, where did you put Marte? I put him above Simeon, one spot above him. Where did you, where did you put him though? Uh, at four. four and Marte at or and Simeon at five. But he was incredible in twenty, like incredible. And Altuve incredible. was also incredible in 2019, and he was also incredible in 2018 and yeah. 2017. Marte's so actually, I, I can't see how Marte is better than Altuve, but that's another thing. But that's my point. You see, like, Altuve and uh, Marte have been incredible. Like, uh, up at, like uh, the only reason I knocked Altuve a lot was I feel as if he was overperforming a little bit in 2019, and I don't know how sustainable. I don't, I don't, I'm not saying what 2020 Probably because he was cheating, huh? No, no, I don't think it's bang, that. He bang. was good in 2016, no, I'm so kidding. I don't think so. But 2020 is not it, like people who think like, oh, he's now he's now a sucky player. Like that's crazy. Uh, he could probably move up. He's ridiculous uh, in the playoffs. He's like a 200. Yeah, no, he was an incredible. He's a good baseball player. People are people are nuts. People forget 2019. He also had a pretty rough start. He's a fantastic baseball player. The only reason I'm not gonna... has just sent the Astros to <laughs> the world. Oh, I, he's a Yankees well, fan. I don't know. I, I don't like, care. I that's like one of the worst I'm, memories I'm, of my life. That's what. Uh, I, I, I rather get live stream. I was crying. I think. Yeah, right, was that? Bro, no, that was the little Mickey home run that I was crying for. Yeah, dude, no. I, I would rather get knocked out, get my tooth knocked out again. I remember watching that game. That was that was uh, that was electric. Yeah, I remember Thanks watching the, the 2019 Cubs playoff run too. That was fun. Yeah, I yeah. don't remember that. Especially it, the part right. where they, especially <laughs> the part where they won the division. Yeah, Jack, you didn't have Musaka top ten. That's crazy. I had him at That's eleven, fair. I think. I uh, when I did my list. And it was between him and Cronenworth because of volume, obviously. But um, what do you mean because of volume? Then you pick the one who's played twenty-seven. Okay, exactly because of volume is why I considered it. But then I remembered I don't really give a flying fuck about volume. Wait, how are you gonna act like a twenty-seven-year-old who came up last year, who was a career minor leaguer, had a good season but fell off in the second half, is, and uh, by the way, didn't deserve the rookie of the year. I, I guess he didn't win it, but. Um, is is not like prone to flukiness. Do you want to push narratives? Wait, do you want to push narrative, James? I don't want to push. Let's push some narratives. Steamer weighted runs could have plus at a hundred for twenty twenty one. What is Mustakas's? I would guess it's like uh, some... it's higher. I'd I guess it's about the same. I but I, again, don't don't, don't care about Steamer. No, no, like, no, 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 no. Like no, no, I'll, no, no, I'll, no. I I like Steamer to push narratives, but other than that, it's like, pushing narrative though. Exposed. No, I mean, is at 104, but he has he's rated with better defense, and he's gonna play more games according to because well, I mean I don't know. Well, Steam, like Steamer play. projects that everyone's gonna play 150 games, which is no, really they, stupid no, 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 no. They project not. Cronenworth to play 103, and they project Judge to play 130. So they, they kind of adjust for injury, kind of. And catchers don't play a lot of games according to Steamer, so which makes sense. Well, that makes sense because yeah, when's the last time catchers play? Or Austin know. Hedges playing 160 games this year. Austin oh, Hedges is fucking terrible. The fucking second the electronic strike zone is implemented, you're gonna It'll see Austin Hedges like and single like Walgreens. Bro. You're literally gonna see what you're like your local Walgreens, bro. The second the electronic strike <laughs> okay, zone. Okay, okay. Some someone explain how Marte is better than Altuve, unless you yeah, already somebody, did that. Please explain. Please so one okay, okay, here's the big reason. Okay, here's the big reason. I'm waiting for the reason. Did Altuve se- did Marte send the Astros to the World Series? No, it was Shut freaking up. Altuve. Now, in all seriousness, though, uh, the reason is like I I, I know this is a, a narrative, okay, but Marte. So why are you using it? Don't no no don't say why are you why why are you using Steamer Wobo because Steamer Wobo is more accurate than X Wobo and DRC plus has a higher correlation with Wobo out of the two stats so he's projected to have the highest weighted on base average out of all the uh se- out of all second basemen he's projected to have the third best wins of our replacement and it's just just edging out Altuve. So and are you only looking at projections just- here because since 2018 or 2017. Why are, at, better. No. why are you looking at? No. Why are you looking Marte's at? has been better since 2018. Anyway, he's been better since 2019, hasn't he? Has he really? And 18. Yeah, you said Sab, you're on crack. I'm well, okay, look. Better. Hold on. Like hold on. I, I'm putting I'm putting your uh your list into the spreadsheet. Um. I I might contract dates. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, but look, hold on. 
Altuve had a 120 diversity plus from 2018, right? And Marte had 124. That's only a four gap, right? And then yeah, Marte's yeah, I get that. I, I also Marte's OA 150 was seven, and Altuve's also, was two. You also got to consider like, first of all, OA. Just looking, at it, I'm not a big fan of that, obviously, but I, I do acknowledge that. But Chapman, Marte's a better defender. I also am thinking like, I, uh, I am considering a bit of 2017 here. Uh, and not necessarily for Marte, but more for Altuve. And you might think, oh, Jack, you know, why, why the fuck are you doing that? You're only using one sample size to push your narrative. Bang, bang, bang. Um, but they could either be <laughs> – they, they could be either way. But I just think Altuve's track record track record as, as well – Altuve's track record as well uh, puts him over the edge slightly. Uh, because obviously – and also he was insane in the 2020 playoffs. If, oh, um, he was, he was like Jack, you like DRS, right? What? Yeah, you can't. But that, Marte didn't get an opportunity to play in the playoffs. So that's not fair to him. Yeah. Well, it's kind well, of that's because he it's plays on a fair to Marte, but it's more it's not fair to Altuve just not included. Wait, wait, hold on. Look, yeah, it's, it's not fair because because I I don't know I read an article it about this. Fair. If you compa- if you add together like his yeah, I, playoff I and regular season production, he had like even then he had like a what like one fifteen or something WRC plus. Yeah, plus no, this I'm year. not saying ignore it for Altuve. I'm saying like, don't yeah. like. I'm pretty sure if Marte well, was thing- healthy and got a shot at the postseason, he would have performed better too. I'm not going to hold 28 20 against Altuve or Marte. You can't. Well, you yeah, can't but like Al- Altuve also has like a tendency to perform well in the playoffs, but that's not like something that I really care about when I'm yeah. making a list, right? Yeah, I'm also, just looking for extra sample size. One guy was healthy and the other wasn't. Marte wasn't healthy in 2020. Altuve was, Altuve was not healthy either. He played Altuve played the playoffs. Yeah, he played, yeah, in oh, played in the playoffs, but he was hurt during the regular season yeah, a couple he, he times. Was, but, that, but my point is, they, Marte was hurt. That's why he struggled in 2020. I don't think it's a flip. So it was like, Altuve. I guess he was he got a, but he got a shot in the playoffs to show you that he was what he could do with Altuve. Marte never got so that shot. Just run ignore that. Like, so I'm why not, do you ignore that? No, no, no. I'm not ignoring it for Altuve. I'm saying it. you can't you can't use that to say, well, you know, Mar- Altuve showed up in the playoffs. What did Marte do? He didn't get a There's shot. Well, it's not that we're something. saying what did Marte do. I'm it's saying, just oh, okay. So you're not you're not knocking. Marte no, I'm not saying Altuve is oh, okay, okay. no. What I'm saying is this extra sample size to okay, show okay. you know. He was bad through 60 games. I'm you know. just saying that his 2020 regular season was a fluke. That's why I'm using the playoffs. But but exactly. Bang. He banged. I'm glad. Yeah, like, what about that? What about that Yankees letter? How do we feel about that? That's 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 nothing. No, no, I'm not gonna say that's nothing because I'm gonna get clipped. It's gonna get jinxed. And about in like 24 hours, if I say it, if I say it's nothing, in 24 hours it will be like the biggest scandal of all time. Yeah, in 24 hours, Aaron Boone will be uh, injecting steroids in every player in the Yankees. And tw- bro, I hope you know you if the Yankees are the most serious, mean fucking foreign substances. Bro, you no, know what, what would the biggest scandal in Major League history be if that could be it? Uh, basic, uh, a giant. Okay, hear me out. Okay, so here we go down a rabbit hole. But okay, go ahead. <laughs> ALCS, right? What if it came out in the ALCS that in 04, the Yankees threw the ALCS, Yankees threw the ALCS, and it came out that like some crazy shit happened, right? We're like, All right, we uh, can just shut up now. Oh, and hear me out. Hear me out. Just, hear me out. Hear me out. Yankees. Town. Yankees throw the series because of some money, some like money pools, like white sock, some black sock shit, right? They throw the series, right? And not only do they throw the series, but they also do it because like maybe like they want to piss off Steinbrenner or something. They're like, like stick it to George Steinbrenner, make him live through like 04 happening because he was a Hey, Jackson, kid. can you make me the host of the meeting? <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> chill, 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 chill. Hear me out. That would be a crazy scandal. Imagine if the whole 04 thing happened because the Yankees want to like stick it to Steinbrenner. They got like paid to do it or something like that. Or like, I don't know, like some Red Sox players, like uh, some Red Sox player, like, like a Yankees player slept with a Red Sox player's wife or something. They want to just like never have them find out. So like throw the series so no one else knows. Some crazy shit like that. That's definitely <laughs> happened in the playoffs, like the 20s, like the 10s. Players just like, you know, like, you throwing know. games for stupid reasons. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> would that not be the biggest scandal in like all? Would it not be not be the biggest what the fuck scandal? You said the biggest, weirdest, stupidest thing ever, and I just gave you the weirdest, stupidest, and craziest idea ever. Ever. Okay, ever. so uh, our top ten cumulative list <laughs> at number twelve and eleven, we've got Adam Fraser and Jake Cronenworth. Those are our honorable mentions. Apparently, uh, neither of them deserve one, but I digress. Oh. Um, right should be top 10. Well, well, I was upside down because your take was so bad. That's very I mean, it's very ironic coming for someone like Simeon top five. Didn't Aaron. you have him at didn't you have him at 
No, well, you had, top five. I would never put him above Lau or Albies because I have Ryan uh, fuck- had Simeon at seven. I, I didn't have him above Lau and Albies. I would never do that ever. He's better than both of them, but that's so he's so better not. than both of them. Uh, can I flip myself? Can you flip, flip yourself upside Albies? down? Flip yourself upside down. No, flip but upside down. <laughs> <laughs> at number ten, we have the uh, probably most overrated player in the league. No, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, this is no, not Tim Anderson, but. Uh, mm-hmm. We got David Fletcher at number 10. Tied for number eight, we have Mike Moustakis and Colton Wong of the Milwaukee Brewers and formerly of the Milwaukee Brewers. At number seven, we have eight win Marcus Simeon. Or if we like baseball reference war, nine win Simeon. But I think eight win Simeon rolls better off the tongue. At number, or tied for number five, we have uh, Tampa Bay Ray, Brandon Lau, and probably most overrated team in baseball, uh, Atlanta that Brave. not the White Sox. Atlanta Brave, uh, Ozzy Albies. Tied for number three and number four, we have Catal Marte and Jose Altuve. At number two, we have Jeff McNeil of the 2021 division champion New York Mets. And at number one, we have DJ LeMahieu, LeMickey, as Jack calls him. One of the best pure hitters in baseball. No, I'm not going to do that. Top 10, so, top, top 10 player in baseball. Best player he's, a, in the he's a pure hitter. He's That's one of the cool. best yeah. hitters in the Bronx because when the time is right, when the Yankees right, need the this. big hit, <laughs> it's <laughs> it is, that, that, that concludes, our, that concludes our, uh, our, our our list portion. A, a big thank you to, to Seb for joining us uh, and having pretty solid lists, all things considered. What about the What about the relevant sponsorship? You didn't say it at all today. I already I did. Oh, he already said in the intro. Thank you for relevant. Well, let us put thank on the list. <laughs> that that, puts that, DJ to make you that top ten player. That podcast was sponsored by Relevant. Make sure you go download their app. Link is in the description and in our bios on Instagram. Uh, and also thank you to Fanatics for sponsoring today's podcast. Moving into our next time of today's podcast, we have trivia. I'm beating Ryan by a lot. And it is 43 to 19. Yeah. Dude, I'm back season. 20, I'm down bad. 21. You're no, you're down, down 24, more. but... Down you said 40, didn't you say 40? Oh, no, you said 43 to 19. No, I, right? Okay, so I have five questions. I'm going to ask both of you how you want these points to be. Do you want one, two, three, four, five? Yeah. Or do we want... One three three five five. One three three five five. Yeah, I like that other one. I like it. I like it. Okay, Jack. In 2014, Nelson Cruz left the Orioles and signed with this team. I'm pretty sure it was 2015. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Seattle Mariners with the answer. Oh, it was well, not 2015, unless Jackson's wrong. So if it is, blame him. I'm not for the 2015. Yeah, Cruz season. played for the Orioles in 2014. In 2014, yeah. Real quick it's story. I didn't know about this. Because I wrote Hal Steinbrenner a letter that said he should sign Nelson Cruz the year before he like went off with the Orioles in 2014, and he sent me a bunch of shit back, but he didn't obviously do it, which is pretty cool that I was right about that. Uh, anyways, I digress. But in in, in oh. 2014, yeah, oh. I was like, I don't remember how old I was. It was What's uh, wrong with you? you know. But I was, I, I sent the, I still have the letter. Yeah, you know, what? I'll post the letter somewhere, and uh, I'll post the letter somewhere, or I'll find the letter and I'll, I'll show you guys. I guess but these anyways, questions, these questions aren't really. Um. Okay. You know, I fucked something up. Uh, Ryan. I got. I was, I was right, right? Just. Yes. Know. Yes, you are right. This World Series champion closer left the Red Sox to sign with the Cubs in 2018. Uh, it's easily the best closer in baseball. Craig Kimbrel. Nope. Huh? It's Koji Uihara. <laughs> it is. I hate- Bro, are you? Are you stupid? Well, didn't you say really sign- bad trivia, you said Red I Sox said 2016. Oh, I didn't hear you. My, my mom was in my, was in my room. I was trying to... Koji oh. Yeah, Koji Oh, dude, wait, what? I heard 2018. How did I hear 2018? Okay, hold on. I heard 2018. This... Yeah, he said 2018. I know I he heard 2018. No, he I said 2018. 2018. No, he did said I? 2018. Yes, you I, did. I heard 2016. Uh, you I... can run it back. I swear you said 2018. All right, well, we'll run it back after the episode. Can I get and... that point? And we'll take your point away. I mean, no, you gotta give him the point. You got it right. 
Yeah, I got it right. Come well, on. he got it right, and was, was Kimbrel signed in 2019 team. anyway, so you would have been wrong. No, 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 2018 offseason, no, because the 2014 offseason would be the Nelson. No, but he off-season. he also got keikled, as you called it, and didn't sign until, like, July. Yeah. Yeah. But that still counts as the 2018 offseason. No, it doesn't. No, he, it does not. Okay, so he's not, so he's not in the 2018 off- free agent class. No. Well, no, I mean, not. if he he's signed not. in July of 2019, no, no, no. then no, he is. Is he in the 2018? Is he in the 2018? Jackson, can you Yes or no? Yes or no? Is he in the 2018 free agent class? All right. No, so not. we are on to our medium questions. We're three points. I, in I, 20, I not, in 2009, this NL Central pitcher, or this pitcher left the NL Central to sign with the Red Sox for $82 million. I am seeing some Homer questions here from Jackson, but it's okay. Wait, can you read? Can you read? Can you say that again? Because I was answering something. I'm sorry. In 2009, this pitcher left the NL Central to sign with the Red Sox for 82 million dollars. He left the NL Central. NL Central. NL Central. Sign with the I Red mean, Sox. I mean, I can look that up, but I'm pretty sure. Andre Igwood. No, 2009. No, he did not leave the NL Central. What the can you please repeat fuck, the question? Jackson? I'm sorry. One more time. Just can you repeat the question? Did I did I copy and paste this wrong? Yeah, no. it says in 2009 this pitcher signed with the Red Sox for 82 okay, million, so, coming from an NL Central so, team, but he came yeah. from the AL West. So it turns out I'm a moron. Uh, I, I learned that now. This is right, he came play. from an AL, AL West, West team. AL West. And you want me to know who it is? You want me to say who it is? Yes. In 2009, AOS pitcher left the division and signed with the Red Sox for $82 million. Red Sox, Red Sox, Red Sox. He's Wait, just so I can understand right? the question. Is it – so if the pitcher was there for the twenty, the start of the 2010 season or start of the 2009 season? In 2009. And so he's so, there for the start of 2009 season. No, no, no. Like he, his debut with the Boston Red Sox was in 2010. Okay, okay. Um, this is like a super obvious name I should know. Maybe. Uh, Red Sox, Red Sox, Red Sox. Not John Lester. Um. Who are you? I wonder. And what I'm trying to think of the 2013 team because he's probably the 2013 team. Oh, was it John Lackey? Yes, it was. Not John Lester, but another From John. Another John who won the World Series with both Boston and Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, Mickey Mouse rank, but whatever. Uh, so now we are at what 48 to 19 jesus it christ 40, Ryan. it should be 48 to 20 but of course oh he signed in 2018 but it's not kimbrell even though he was a 2018 free agent kimbrell not kimbrell first of all he's he signed in 2019 no, no, and i said 2016 no 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 you, you said 2018 you said 2018. did i not say 2016 no, you we'll, said we'll run it back you later. I, 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 I got the all right ryan ryan george Spring, shut up <laughs> all right, I'm I'm skipping your question. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. George Springer signed a six-year, one hundred fifty million dollar contract with the Blue Jays this offseason, which is the largest contract in the history of the Blue Jays franchise. Whose record did he beat? And this is for free agents only, excluding extensions. What year so was not the Donaldson? Extension? Nah, not Donaldson. All right. What year was the? Uh, I don't again? think Donaldson is the largest contract. Uh, it's the largest extension in Blue Jays history, anyways, but. Pretty sure it wasn't him. Yeah. The but, uh, largest, I, the largest extension in Blue Jays history is Vernon Wells in 2007. But I would have guessed that's him, not so. the answer. Thank you. <laughs> um, can I know the year? No, because I don't know the year. Whose problem is that? <laughs> Yours, because I'm not giving it to you. You man, uh, I don't know, bro. I, I, why would I know this? Uh, I can give you it. the I can give you the money if if uh, sure. if, yeah, yeah, sure. if Jack is okay with that. Because if you give me the money, then I can understand the time era. Eighty two million dollars. Ooh, that's uh, that's that's not that's not two thousand ten. That can't be twenty tens. No, that can't be like twenty ten. Also, the Blue Jays are kind of poverty, so yeah, they are. So mm. it wasn't a no, 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 no. Holiday started with them. He 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 signed elsewhere. He didn't sign with them. 
Um, Bautista was traded to them, and he was an extension. Um, Donaldson was an extension, and Carnacion was probably an extension because they didn't sign him either to a large deal. Um, I think of really decent players to play with them. Must Mar- Russell Martin didn't get a big contract to go. Oh, there. I think I know who this is. I know exactly uh, who this is. Ryan, you're you. fucked. You're so I fucked. You. I hate you. I hate you. Ryan, you're so you. fucked. If you don't get this, you. I hate you. If you don't get this, you're dumb. You're dumb. Is it a is it a starting pitcher? Can't tell you. Can't say. Might be. I, I know the answer now. I'm pretty sure. I'm like almost. I'm. I I wouldn't bet the farm just yet. Uh, <laughs> no, because I was. I can't say. Art, okay, I know Art Dickey was from a trade. I want to guess Mark Buley, but I don't think he got that big of a contract. Yearly? What the Burley. fuck? Shut it's, up! I'm your sure. pronunciations almost, are actually the worst in like the history of okay. podcasting. It can't be Burley because he did, was older. Um, it can't be Osuna Giles. Those guys did not sign there. Ah, uh, God, I don't know. Oh, Suna and Giles are not getting know, I'm eighty-two million dollar contracts. I'm, I'm, I'm listing off gosh darn names, damn it. Um, is it, dude? I don't even know who's played. Why do I not know this? Oh, was it Jose? No, 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 no. no he didn't sign there. He signed with the Marlins. He signed with the Marlins. He was traded there. He was traded there. He also no. sucked before he was there. Yeah, so. no, no, yeah. He 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 signed with the Marlins and got traded there. Did he? Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. I don't. I don't know. I hate you. I hate you. He he signed with the. He did. He. It was Jose Reyes. Is that your guess? Uh, wait. Jose Reyes. That was. Uh, I. I it was. It, I think he got. I think he signed with Miami. I'm pretty sure he signed with Miami and got traded there. All right. Well, is is that your guess? Is Jose? Reyes no. Reyes? No. It can't. That can't. He got traded there, so that doesn't count, right? If he gets traded there with a big contract, that doesn't count. Well, that's not a free agent signing, so... If that okay, was- so that makes sense. Uh, I'm going to roll with... I'm going to roll with Mark B- Blech. Mark Early? Blech. Yeah, Mark Blech. That's not right. It's not Ryan, right. you said his name, dude. Yeah, you did say his Literally name. You literally said his name. Was it Encarnacion? No, since James now said it... Well, he said, yeah, well, I pretty much knew Russell Martin is the guy. Yeah, it is oh, Russell he, Martin. Oh, it was him? You literally said his name, dude. Bro, I didn't know, because I, I don't remember him signing for that much money. It was 2014. Oh, what they, 50. Oh. And again, if the, the the here's a difference that I should that I should have said at the beginning and I will say now is um a free agent can sign with their old team and that's not an extension. What? No, 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 no. Time out, because time they out, were time. a free agent. An extension is when you no, extend no, no, your contract. No, no, no. Well, the, what a time out. didn't they extend his contract? Who's? Technically, by definition, they ex- they extended Russell Martin's contract. No. All right, all right stop with the old New York guy. No, 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 Don't do this to me. You were very technical. Like, yeah, he was an, a free agent in the 2018 free agent class, but he signed right, in 2019. Jack, okay, Jack. when did Bryce Harper sign? When did Bryce Harper sign? Yeah. Is he a 2018 free agent? Bryce Harper signed in 2019. It doesn't matter. He's a 2018 free agent. I don't care. He's a 2018 free agent. If you Google 2018 free agents, Craig Kibble's a 2018 free agent. Because so he became ahead. a free agent in 2018. But that's that's the exact premise. That's the premise. That's the point. That's the point. You can't say. I'm talking that. about when they signed. Okay. That's the point. Um, I'm trying to think which one of these questions that should make a harder question. So for Jack, because I I don't think this one's particularly hard, but. In 2007, this pitcher signed a one-year deal worth $28 million, the largest one-year contract of all time. Who signed it? Can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. Oh, should I give you the team? I gave Jackson the team when I asked him. Good question. Actually, no, I didn't. Uh, in 2007, this pitcher signed a one-year deal worth $28 million, which is the greatest, not greatest, the largest one-year deal of all time. Who was it? And it was a pitcher. What? Look at the team. I could give you the team, but I don't really feel like it. Ryan, are you okay with me having the team? Can you repeat the question? Jesus fucking Christ. I'm on AIDS. I was... <laughs> it's because I was fact See, that Nelson Cruz signed you're, in 2014. You're because, getting canceled, too. No, in 2007... I, this pitcher signed a one-year deal worth $28 million, which is the largest one-year deal in the history of baseball. Who signed it? Oh, okay. I know who it is. No, you okay. don't. 
Do I get a team? No. Then how the fuck am I supposed to get? Largest one of your deal ever. So I, I think it think it's probably maybe an old guy. You're probably telling me that to make sure I get it wrong, but um, I know it's just very obvious that it's Barry Bonds. Ryan, are you okay with me knowing the answer? I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Team. I'm okay with you. Ryan's a good team. You know the team. The Brian is a team. You know the yeah. team. I know who it, ha- it has to be. Yeah, it has Yours. to be. Come on. Wait, so it's your team. What? Oh, oh. Just go. He was a New York Yankee. Oh, it was? I think I know. And I probably have to. I know. I'd be such a fan of it. Jackson's original guess was a different New York Yankee. Was it? Oh. <laughs> Fuck, I was going to do that. I, I feel like he'd be way too old for that. No, it would not be. Just that. give an answer. Oh, my God. God. I gave you like 10 minutes for your Martin, so. Shut up. And you still <laughs> got it wrong. <laughs> I, Ryan is so confident right now, but knowing his track record, I, I know really don't think is, he knows it is, which is going to piss me off. It's definitely Jeff McNeil, man. Certainly. Definitely. You, start, you know, I'm Barry kidding. Bonds was... He, was my, he should have signed a one. Uh, the Yankees for not the Yankees should have signed Barry Bonds. And it's so crazy that they care. They didn't care to have that they had A-Rod on the team, but they were, but they were like, oh, no, I don't want Barry Bonds. But okay, okay, okay. Ryan, you're going off on a lot of tangents today. Let's just chill out I a little bit. Go off on Jack, I'm gonna okay. give you I'm gonna give you 30 more seconds. Stop. Stop give giving me pressure. You give Ryan give so three much more time. seconds. No, 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 no. Shut up with that. Oh, no, 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 no pressure, because you're sitting there. I know, I know, I know it. I know it, 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 I know it. I know it. All right, I'll get I'm get, I'm I, you know, I'll just stop you when I feel like stopping you. Okay, thanks, James. Just give an answer, bro. Um Bro, listen to me, Bob. Bro, I'm not going to get it. So it doesn't matter if you don't get it. I'm going to be wrong anyways. So it doesn't matter. We both know this. Oh, my God. Was it Randy Johnson? It it wasn't. Oh, uh, then is it Mike Lucino? Um, It was Roger Clemens. Huh? I I guess I was – I figured that was not even close to the answer. I, I got it was Mike Mussini because he would sign a one-year deal and then just retire. Because I know he retired after 08. He wanted to retire. No, and Jackson's original guess was Andy Pettit. But what? No, I thought he was there for too long. To do that. Clemens, yeah. Clemens left uh, Houston for New York for his final season. He went back to the Yankees in 08? And signed. No, it was in his, the season he was on the Yankees was 2007. Oh, he left Man, the Yankees whatever. and went to you know Ryan get fucked. So no, he I... never left the Yankees. Oh, okay. Well, so okay, okay. Is this for, is this hard or medium? medium? That that was medium. All right, Ryan, you're up. Oh, do, oh yeah. And Ryan. Ryan's is still medium. Okay, so this is I went second. So yeah, okay, go ahead. Uh, who signed the biggest free agent contract in Detroit Tigers history? Free agent, so it's not like Miguel Cabrera doesn't count. Yeah, but I don't know if it was him anyways. I don't think it was. He, he, signed, he signed a massive extension. I might know the answer to this, but I don't know. No, it was, it was Cabrera for extension, but he okay. was not a free and agent. And it's got to be so, – so it could be a – same rules as the Russell Martin thing. Can hit free agency, can re-sign. That's the biggest contract. Yes. Okay. Um, biggest contract in Tiger. Although I don't think Russell Martin's was a re-signing. Okay. Yeah, but, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I got the question wrong. Um, so I got to think. Uh, thinking of one of their players, uh, Scherzer didn't sign with them. Uh, Porcello never signed with them. Price never signed with them because Scherzer got traded there. Uh, Cabrera was homegrown. Well, no, he was traded. Excuse me. Victor Martinez is the only is the, one of the guys I'm thinking of because I know he went from Cleveland to Detroit, but I don't know if he got that. He might have gotten that big of a contract. Verlander could be it because maybe in a an extension or something. No, not an extension. A free agency hit, but I don't think that happened. I think it was an extension. Um. Kinsler was traded there from the Rangers for Prince Fielder. Prince Field, wait, oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. I think I know who this is, by the way. I'm just letting you know. Oh, I think it might be, it could be Prince Fielder, right? Because he would have to sign there and he got traded. Yeah, he got traded from, no, 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 no. Did he get traded? From, he went, so Kinsler started with the Rangers, went to Detroit. And if you start with the Rangers and went to Detroit, I know in that trade they got uh, Fielder. 
they sent off Fielder to Texas. And they're still paying – I think they were paying his contract a little bit after his retirement. So it's either him, Victor Martinez is another guy I'm thinking of. I do not know any pitchers. Oh, Don Willis, maybe, maybe. Willis could be it. Ah, that's a good uh, – no, 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 no. But he fl- he fl- you're frozen. All right, no, you're good now. Yeah. Uh, so- maybe we maybe should cap Ryan's question too. Time bro. Wait, so no one got the Clemens question, so we're still at 51 to 19. Jack, uh, yeah, I think I know the answer to this one too. I'm just saying, I'm down between two guys. Yeah, I'm down well, Ryan's seven. down between about seven. So, Ryan, your Wi Fi is Ryan, your Wi Fi is no, I'm down between three. Will it? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, okay. Okay. Uh, All right. What, I'm giving you until exactly 7:32, and it just is it, up was it Prince, was it Prince Fielder? Yeah. Uh, it was. I, whoa, 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 I said it. Whoa, whoa, I said, whoa, whoa, was it Prince Fielder? That's my answer. What, what that was his answer. answer, Jack? I said, was it that Prince correct? Fielder? Yes. Yeah, I was surprised. I thought it was Jordan Zimmerman. No. No, Fielder signed a nine-year, two hundred and fourteen million dollars contract with the Tigers Why? in two thousand and twelve. I t- I told you, I was like, I'm Prince Fielder got a mega contract. No they way. shipped him off. I would not have gotten that because he was a superstar. He was a mega star. Oh, yeah, Fifty-one to twenty-one. No, 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 twenty-two because you get God three for it, those. Thirty-point lead is blown. I gotta get that. Back. All right. So we are on to hard questions now. Jack. Yes. The Cincinnati Reds largest free agent contract is a tie between these two players. Who are they? Um, they got the same exact contract, like same years, same. I kind of just want to full send it here with this one guy. So <laughs> Homer Bailey. Okay. And... Uh, this is not an extension, right? Is there a free shape for you? Well, no. So Vado doesn't count. But... Yeah. Was... So Homer Bailey, him. Homer Bailey, Homer Bailey, and um, who signed with fucking Cincinnati? Who the fuck signs with the fucking? Let's cast down so the driver. Me. Uh, Iguodala. No. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I wish you just let me take one of them because I think Homer Bailey is correct, but I don't know. Um, so we'll go Homer Bailey, like I said already, and uh, she was only there for one year. On a trade. And this and is in largest total value, not average annual. I know. Which is why Obviously. Homer Bailey. Fuck. I don't know if Homer Bailey is an answer then. But I'm just going to ride with Homer Bailey anyways. And we'll also say... <sighs> what the fuck? I thought this would be a lot easier. It's not easy. This is not easy at all. I'm so lost. Uh, who played for the fucking Reds? Nobody plays for the Reds. Brandon Phillips and Homer Bailey? Is that your final answer? Well, yeah. I don't really know anything else. No. Okay. And in fact, they're both wrong. Fuck you. No, why'd you tell Ryan? You. Thank you. Thank you. Homer Bailey, I know. Oh, God. Yeah, I was totally going to take that. But uh, I was, I don't know if you're... I was going you to know, Ryan, Ryan needs all the help he can get. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not getting this right regardless. Uh, so, Shin Su Chu is not an... It, you, you talked about him. I don't, did he start there or did he start in Cleveland? I forget. Uh, he started in one of those places. He might, might have started in Cleveland. I think he started in Cleveland, went to Cincinnati... Then went to Texas. So it was like in that order. Uh, I think he started in Cleveland. Because I don't know if they traded him after one year. That would have made sense. Yeah, because he they, they, it would have made sense. Because if he would have went to Cincinnati, uh, he would they would were a good team. So it would have made sense for them to deal him to the to the Rangers. All right, so all right you're thinking this through too much. Let's, let's hurry up. Phillips was homegrown. Oh, I sure. homegrown, homegrown uh, doesn't she, necessarily uh, mean Is it Mustakis they... and Castellanos? Is it Mustakis and Castellanos? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? Homer Bailey. I'm looking up Homer Bailey's contract. I think you're wrong. Hold on. I, I just got this straight off of MLB.com. So if I'm wrong, they're wrong. MLB.com is wrong. It might have been an extension. It was. It might have been traded. Hold on. 
Uh, what? No, no, it said Homer Bailey signed a one hundred and five million dollar no contract with the Reds. Was that an extension, though? It was definitely an extension. Don't because care. I'm, you, no, no, I'm keeping it. No, it was. Hold on, I'm looking. Hold on, hold yeah. on. Homer Bailey has agreed to a six-year. Yeah, it was in 2014. Was he a free? He couldn't have been a free no, in 2014. I think, I think it was an extension. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. it was an extension because he otherwise was... it would be on here. Fuck. Because it says the largest extension no. is Joey Votto, 10 years, 225. But that's Votto. It's Homer Bailey, and I fucked that up. Ooh, All right. Cool. Homer Bailey. Homer Bailey. I was up... gonna say if he got it wrong, I was gonna say that they have both been mentioned in this podcast, but. When I would have said cost down. Wait, let me let me double check. Yes, I already said that I mentioned cost. Whatever. All right, for Ryan. No, it's oh, me. Uh, no, it's just Ryan. No, it's me. It's me. Come on. Yeah, I uh, got it. Also, Prince Fielder had a four hundred five wobo before signing that contract for the. Right. Who is the only player to hold the largest free agent contract in two franchises' histories? Oh, it's Alex Rodriguez. Fuck you, James. That was way too easy. That was so <laughs> easy. <laughs> way too easy. Oh, it's not- that is not a five point question, you fuck. It's you not him. Me. It's, it's not him. Wait, no, no, tell me. It's not him. I literally said it at the beginning that Alex, I was confused why Alex Rodriguez wasn't the largest in Yankees history, and it's because Garrett Coles was large. <laughs> Do you not remember <laughs> oh, that? Ryan. Oh, no, Ryan. Oh, that's tough, Ryan. It's really tough. Do you, not, do you not remember when I said that? No, it's Liter- because A Rod also signed a free agent contract because he opted out. Yeah, but Coles was bigger, so he still isn't the biggest in Yankees history. And I think Ellsworth, no, Ellsworth is bigger, but... Ellsworth. But you still tell me, you never said that it's a franchise record. Oh. I can't tell what you just said, but you're but wrong. No, tell me, he did set the franchise record. I find. But I said hold. a Rod's contract was... But I said to hold the largest free agent contract in two uh-huh. history. He doesn't hold the he record. He did hold the largest... The largest he doesn't. Not anymore, but you, you never oh, said come on. that. You never said that. Come on. You said said it. 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 Whatever. No, I didn't. I literally have it written right. down. Who's the only player to hold the largest free agent contract in All two right. franchises in history? That's my bad. And, I, I up. and I there was up. a major hint before we started. I messed up. Go ahead, Jack. What was the hint? The major hint before we Your started was, was that Alex Rodriguez wasn't the largest in Yankees history. So I'm And you still got it wrong. Wait, this counts extensions, right? No. no. Largest free. How did A Rod not count? Ca- All right, relax. My bad. My bad. Well, okay. A Rod's wasn't an extension either because he opted out and became a free agent and then up. resigned. Shut up. I knew I was wrong. Shut up. Uh, was it? No, Griffey was an extension. And Jack, your next question is very similar. So. Well, thanks. I fucking hate this question. Um, I'm gonna guess. He had to sign free agent contract. So, uh, fuck. Fuck. Okay. I feel like it's going to be like a team like the Rays because the Rays just, I don't know. Good guess. I think you're, I think you're definitely <laughs> off here, but. It's a team similar to the Rays. In a couple of ways. That's all I'm going to give you. Well, all right, I'm kinda, I kind of have an idea here. Both but teams killed Steve Irwin. I think it was the largest in – wait, so if they were tr- – no, it was a trade. Never mind. I was going to say Granky, but that was a trade. Or it might be Granky for the, the Royals. It might be Granky for the Royals. I was going to say Granky. No, it wasn't. Because oh, the uh, you, you know what? Yes. I don't know. Well, thank you. What's your guess? <laughs> it was not my guess. My guess is going to be. Why would you tell him? Oh, well, he gave you a hint before, and you're. I gave you a hint too. I don't know. I didn't care, Jack. The, the, the A Rod thing should have been a fucking give me or give me or whatever you fucking call it. Uh, I'm gonna Go. say five, four. No, three. stop with the countdown. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> uh, Damn it, damn it. Why are you laughing so hard, Ryan? Is this tampering? You know the answer? 
<laughs> no. You guys are laughing at me because it's probably super obvious. <laughs> what, what if I text him right now? I'm not answer? laughing at you. I'm tampering you. I'm, well, uh, no, I'm, you can't tamper. I'm, I'm tampering. Uh, all right, I'll give you another minute. Thank you. In fact, I'm setting a timer. Here you go. 59, 58, 57, 56, 55, 54. Uh, Think of just everybody think of, who you've said in this think? podcast. Is it? Is it? Is Wait, it, James, I have a question for you. What? Blink if, uh, blink. Just blink. Blink now, do it. I'm, I'm, I'm not asking you, I'm demanding you. Wait, are you being racist? You can't say it. You, can, you can't see me blinking. No, 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 no. It's because I just started blinking out of nowhere and so I'm just like, James, go ahead and blink. Thank you. Uh, is it two? I'm so lost. I guess I'm just thinking current players, and I'm not thinking like past players. Yeah, um, it's pro- it, it's probably like Steph Curry. I'm gonna, or something I'm gonna like say that. fuck it and and uh, punt. No, I'm think- oh, I, I, I won real quick. I, 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 go. Yes, the A's. It has to be like someone in the A's. Not yes. Giambi. Go. Uh, 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 You've got three seconds. I'm gonna guess Zach Ranky and just say fuck it. Fuck. It was right. Yeah. Let's go. Would you tell him no. He's okay. Well, I time. I told him no on the Royals because because I thought I was I thought I was giving it away by like you tried laughing sabotage. again. Oh, well, Zach Ranky inject. Okay. What two teams were it? Was it for? D backs was one has to be. Uh, and Brewers. Royals Brewers. and the. No, the Brewers was a trade. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was I feel like I feel like you shouldn't get the points if you don't know what teams they were. No, 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 no. no. He gets the points. No, I'm kidding. But I still need, I still Royals and D backs. I would just give me a couple of seconds. Royals, 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 Royals. And D-backs. Didn't they draft him? When I said it was a team similar to the Rays, I wasn't lying to you. The Royals are not similar to the Rays. I think I thought you were thinking like Athletics. No, Dodgers. I thought John Lester Dodgers. Said he said the Dodgers. 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 He still holds oh, it. Yeah. There's no way. No, 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 no. Bauer just signed there. Yeah, and it's less than Granky. There's no way they've never given out that big of a contract. The Anyways, largest. Well, Betts has a bigger contract, but that was an extension. Exactly. All right. Wow. There's. All right. All right, Jack. Here's your similar question. Who's the only player to have the biggest free agent contract and biggest extension in a franchise's history? I feel like it's got to be pretty easy. There's only one player on this list. I could have missed one, though, so I'm just going to check, double-check that. What? This feels kind of easy. I want to say A-Rod. I'm not going to say A-Rod. But... How could it be A-Rod? How could it be I A-Rod? What team would it be with? Well, it would be the Yankees, right? Because No, he didn't extend No! He wouldn't even hold... The... Wouldn't they even... didn't sign him, and then they didn't extend him. All right, him, all right, so... all right, all right. And all right. also, don't think... That... Wait, does that have to be the current longest contract, or is it just at that time? No, currently to this day oh, is so the it can't biggest. Be it can't be A-Rod. It can't be A-Rod. The largest extension in Yankees history was Derek Jeter in two thousand and one. That's so weird. Jeter, he got ten five years. Rings. Ten years, hundred eighty nine. He but got five rings. That has nothing to do with the answer. I don't care what that advanced analytics say. Okay, Jeter was an incredible defender. What? I'm gonna say. You say, uh, did you just say Stanton? No, I said I'm going to say. Oh, I was going to say. I was gonna, oh, man, I would have lost it. <laughs> um, I'm good. <laughs> Jackson. <laughs> get someone <Come> good. <laughs> Please, don't punt. Just get someone good. I don't know who it is. Just get someone I'm good. Give me an idea. I'm gonna this. I feel like I'm going to punt this question. Right just, now. Just, I, mean, I, I wouldn't have known this. Go. Just go. I wonder if Jackson or Seb would know this. Uh, I'm gonna. We already mentioned him in this this podcast, but I'm thinking about a player. A certain five player. seconds. Five, three, 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 three. Uh, All right, we're gonna give you ten. No. Don't count down. Don't count down. Eight. Don't, don't count down. Burning Wells. Seven. Yeah. Burning Wells. Didn't we just establish the Springer was the biggest one in Blue Jays history? Like literally ten minutes Dolls? ago. You, 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 you absolutely. 
absolute. Was it called? It was definitely I had no idea. Bingus. Okay, I'm not gonna have a conniption over this. So well, you you're still gonna get it wrong. Why? Why are we flipping? Me and okay. Seb. Yeah, how are we flipping? Uh, anyways, you said largest in franchise history currently, and then they extended with that same team. Not necessarily. No, they couldn't have extended. They wait. So it's what? I don't know the order. Like I don't know which one went first. Oh no. Okay, so they got. Well, they I do. I, I. Okay, I know the order, but I'm not gonna give you the order. Okay, I'm not, not saying it's the exact order. Forty-four. That's so weird. Uh, who the fuck cares? Who cares? Anyways, uh, James, can I? It was. It was it with the same team. Yeah, obviously they okay, hold the so, biggest free agent contract and biggest extension in the franchise's history. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, uh, You're breaking up again. Uh, again. Oh my god. Ryan, you're fucking. He could have been it. That didn't get him an extension. Breaking up again. Why am I? I'm thinking of the Red Sox right now for some reason, but I don't think it was them. Ooh, wait, 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 wait. wait. No, no, no. Pedroia never got a. Pedroia never got to hit free agency. It never got extended. No, 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 no. He couldn't have gotten it because if he got extended first. And then hit I don't know what Ryan time. said while his audio was doing that, but I'll give you another 15 seconds because this trivia segment is about to take 15? 45 minutes. Okay, you could have thought that the whole time that Jack was thinking. Uh, no, that's a very good point. Is it um? Is it can't be Trout? He took two extensions. Um, it can't be Lemicky because he just signed there. Uh, uh, Bro, I don't know why I thought it made you. Uh, could have been Cole. No, could have, I don't. I'm dumb. All I'm right. just on. I'm just Seven. on a lot of things today. Ah, uh, six, five, four, three. Was it myself? Is it myself? Dustin Pedroia. Dustin Pedroia. All right, you guys have both guessed, right? <laughs> Who was it? In honor of Sebastian Baugh. I it's see. Steven Strasburg. Steven Strasburg. Oh! oh. Yeah, he oh, signed the largest. In 2016, he signed a seven-year, $175 million extension. Then he opted out in 2020. And... Or in 2019 and signed the seven year, $245 million deal in 2020. Which is Ryan, your like Wi Fi is so fucking terrible. All right. Bad right now? Do we have one more question? Yes. In honor of his retirement, yeah. Albert Pujols and Robinson Cano both left their teams in the early 2000s signing contracts with these terms, same exact one, like years. Wait, you really and- thought I wouldn't get this? You thought I wouldn't get that? You think this is hard for me? Easiest question in the world. You not Easiest think I wasn't question. watching the moment it was announced? So you want the terms of the contract? Yes. Yeah, but it's for Ryan. No, it's for me. No, no it's for because, him. I got no. Yeah, oh, because oh, the Strasburg no. question was his. Oh yeah, I took a sec. I took a guess at this. So is this no really easy? 20... No. It's easy. <laughs> this. It's wait, time out. This... Wait, time out. If this, I would have known thinking, this. They can't. Okay, Poole signed in uh, the, after the Cardinals won the World Series. So it was after 2011, which means it was 2012. And if he was – so nine-year deal, both of them agreed to nine-year contracts. Both of them agreed to nine-year contracts, and the Yankees didn't want to go to 250, and it was, so it was higher than 250. Uh, exact terms, you said? Yes, years and money, and they were the same. Uh, same deal, same everything. Got it, got it, got it. Got it. Got it. Everything, anything, anything. All right. Uh, the wise, check this one up. Do you want to go down? I don't know. I don't know the answer, really, if I'm honest with you. But I think it's uh, I'll go set nine years because it's nine years. Nine years to two fifty. Nine years two fifty. Hello. Hello, Ryan. Just guessed. James. Oh wait, what did he say? Did you say Ryan? 
I stopped paying nine attention. Nine to fifty. Fifty. No. Nine to fifty. The correct answer is ten years, two hundred forty okay. million dollars. Yeah, it was ten. I don't know where oh, you got it's nine. Oh, twenty twenty-two. What? No, 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 no. Because I, I, I don't, I, I, I don't know, thinking... I don't know if you know how math works. But if no, you go 2011 so to 2021, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know, that's I know, 11 I know. years. 2012 to 2021 is 10 years. Dude, every time I think of this season, I think it's the 2020 season. All right, well, and and Jack is right, which puts him at what 56 to 20. Right? You, you don't remember watching LV Network the time it was signed? It was signed in the morning and on a Saturday morning. He signed with the Mariners on a Saturday morning. For Cano? No, no, I was no, 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 because I was I don't have terrible memory. I have terrible memory. That must have been like awful for you, right? Losing uh, what top ten second baseman of all time? Not awful. No, but at the time. No, right? I didn't want to do. No, I didn't want to. I didn't want to give him nine years. It, no, it, okay, and you I didn't feel bad. You would have known, like, oh, that wasn't a smart move years. in fucking twenty. No, I didn't want to give. I didn't. Give, I didn't care. I didn't like Cano that much. When I was little, I didn't like Cano that much. Right, because so he was really a cheater, care. cheater, Yankees like cheater. No, Yankees, I just didn't PD, care about that's how they won. That's how they won the World Series because they're all cheaters. I just didn't care about. We've been going on far too long with the trivia here. We've, we've been recording for almost two hours, but uh, James, can you? Yo, can is you that a Mickey Mouse ring? So I can feel good about myself. Wow. The score is fifty-six to twenty-seven. This is the only thing left to eat that Be sure to submit trivia questions to our Instagram at Deep Drive Pod or tweet us at Deep Drive Pod. That concludes this episode of the Deep Drive to Left Field podcast. Uh, thanks for watching. If you've gotten to this point, make sure you follow our socials at Deep Drive Pod uh, on both Twitter and Instagram. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at LLV Nerds. Make sure to go follow uh, Ryan or subscribe to Ryan on YouTube at uh, Stat Talk. Make sure to go follow Seb on Instagram at Nationals uh, Express. I have a big thank you to Rob for sponsoring today's podcast. And it's been a deep drive to left by Costinos. We are.